Alright, so I have some fantastic news to talk about with you guys, especially if you guys are as big a Cleveland Cavaliers fans as, you know, potentially I am. Again, this news, I think, will absolutely melt all of our hearts with it now currently being reported that the Cleveland Cavaliers are not only the favorite to re-sign Ricky Rubio, but there's actually been a report that the Cavaliers may have already spoken to him about potentially running it back. And Ricky Rubio is, of course, extremely interested in re-signing with the Cavs. Now, for those of you who don't know what's going on with Ricky Rubio, he essentially did his ACL, I think, about 35 games into the season, where eventually he was traded, of course, to Indiana for Karras Levert. But he never really actually stepped foot in Indiana. In fact, they were just paying him. It was just to match up contracts. He was never an Indiana Pacer. In fact, I'm pretty sure he actually stayed in Cleveland or potentially returned home to Spain or whatever. Here's the thing. This is even furthermore backed up by the fact that the Pacers like never talked about Ricky Rubio and the number they gave him was number 99 because they, I don't even think he ever picked a number. I don't think any of that ever happened. I think they just gave him a number and gave him again the, the lowest because we of course know he was never ever going to play for them. And I don't know if they're interested in him at all. I Obviously, clearly not because they gave him number 99 and I don't think he ever stepped foot in Indiana. But the thing is, let's just say again, he's probably spent a lot of time in Cleveland. I don't know what the rules are with this because one might actually think and say to themselves, hold on, is this tampering? Because technically, Ricky Rubio is on the Indiana Pacers roster, yet is still talking to the Cavaliers about playing with them and all of this stuff. And I just heard a couple of people say this might be tampering. The reason I don't think it is is because I think Indiana agreed on it as well. I think even Indiana, like if the NBA was to come up to the Cavs and say, hey, you've been talking to this guy illegally when he's on another team, I think even the Pacers would back the Cavs up and say, well, it was a part of the trade deal that we would just never, ever talk to Ricky Rubio. Um... And he'd be all the Cavs, and pretty much he would be a, still a Cavalier, but he'd be on the Pacers roster. That's pretty much how it felt like to me. I think that's how it feels like to a lot of people. And in my heart, when I talk about the injuries that the Cavaliers have, I still talk about Ricky Rubio because I still feel like he's on this roster. Like, it, even though he's on the Pacers roster technically, he just never played for them. He never stepped foot for them, and I think it's a big, big thing that he re-signs with the Cavaliers. Now, again, Ricky Rubio said he only wants three more years in the NBA because I believe he said once his son starts school, he's, of course, going to retire and, you know, go and do that. And this is where I think the Cavs will potentially come into it. I just wonder if Ricky Rubio will say, all right, a second, here's my current options here. I can potentially retire from the NBA and go play for a Spanish team like Barcelona, who, might I add, those European league teams are getting really, really big and are offering players a lot of money. Like, um, I can't remember what his name was, but I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would remember the power forward who played for the Bucks. I think it was Nikola Mirotic is what his name was. He played for the Bucks, um, and he was in the playoffs for them playing like 20 minutes a game. But then he got offered like three years, nine million a season or something to go play with some EuroLeague team where he was like from and again he became like the highest paid player there and yeah he did really really well in fact yeah he's still playing for Barcelona right now it's been 2019 since he's played you know joined them and again they've got a really interesting duo of Dante Exum and Nikola Mirotic you just wonder if they say to Ricky Rubio well we could get you to come play for us now we'd offer you a couple million a season, pretty similar to what he'd get in the NBA, of course, and you can come and play here and your son can, you know, start school eventually and all that type of stuff. You just wonder, though, if Ricky Rubio will consider that because, again, Barcelona, imagine if Barcelona created a big three in that Euro League of, you know, Dante Exum, Nikola Mirotic, and Ricky Rubio. That would be one of the best non-NBA 
threes he'd ever seen. So I'm pretty sure Nikola Mirotic, of course, if, if he wanted to, he could probably come back to the NBA and play really well. Again, in his last season, as I said, he was averaging um, nine and a half points per game on 38% from three. And then, um, you know, that was in the playoffs, rather. And then in the year before that on New Orleans, he was averaging 17 a game. And again, for Real Madrid right now, he is currently averaging 20 points per game on around 41% from three. Like, or for Barcelona, rather. Like, how good are those numbers? Like, he's another dude that could legitimately just come back to the NBA right now. So you wonder if Ricky Rubio would consider that or... So basically, that's what I'm saying. Would he say to the Cavs, hold on a second, I'm possibly getting offered a three-year deal that pays me $4 million a season to go play for Barcelona. What are you going to offer me? And that's when I think the Cavs... I actually would like to see them offer him a, a long-ish term deal. I'm Look, if they offered him a one-year deal on the minimum, I, I wouldn't be too surprised. I wouldn't be unhappy or anything like that. But I would really like to see maybe... Would we would we offer him a two-year deal worth around four to five million a season? Hopefully that he's loyal to us because yeah, it'd be cool for him to go play over there. But I still feel like Ricky Rubio could help us win a championship and at least get to the playoffs. Like he was so great for us. He was a really good shot creator. His three-point percentage was up. His playmaking was good. His defense was good. I would absolutely love to see Ricky Rubio back. And the thing is, I think once the NBA season starts, it will basically be, you know. 10 or 11 months since he did his ACL, so I would assume he would be very, very ready to get back into action. I think he'd be ready before the season started, so, I mean, if Odell Beckham Jr. can come back from his ACL, and I think it was like 8 months or something like that, then Ricky Rubio could do it in like 10 to 11, you would think, so he might even get some preseason time there too, to kind of work his body back into it. But yeah, that's the only team I think that's going to be competitive in signing Ricky Rubio, I think Rubio, I don't necessarily know if he cares about the money a whole lot. I just think he cares about the long-term stability. And of course, the money helps. But if the Celtics or a team like that was to offer a couple million more than the Cavs, I don't think he'd necessarily consider it. I think he'd be loyal to us. I think he loved his time in Cleveland. He knows he can help us make the playoffs and try and contend for a championship eventually. And goddamn, if LeBron wants to come back in a year or so, Jesus Christ, that Cavaliers team would be absolutely scary. Like, imagine... Imagine LeBron came back. There was rumors, like, I remember people were saying that, I think, I forgot what journalists said this, but they were saying, and I'm sure a couple of you heard it, that if LeBron wanted to come back and win a championship, he should join the Cavs on, like, a minimum type deal because he doesn't need the money anymore. And that's very true. Like, imagine that team. You'd have Darius Gallon, Colin Sexton, LeBron James, Evan Mobley, Jarrett Allen, Laurie Markkinen, Kevin Love, Karis LeVert, Ricky Rubio, Lamar Stevens. Jetty Osmond, but he'd probably be traded by then. Who knows? That team would be very, very, very stacked. And I'm probably missing someone there. But yeah, I don't know. The Cavs are just such an exciting team. It's so awesome to talk about. And the realistic thing is, this isn't a, like a situation where it's like, oh my God, I'm playing my league in real life. No. Realistically, LeBron James, Ricky Rubio, Sexton, and that could all be coming back to the Cavs. So... It would be really, really awesome to see something like this, of course, happen. Again, LeBron would be still contracted for a year, so it still takes some time on that. But yeah, I'm really interested to see what's going to be going on. Of course, I'd very much like to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Comment in the comment section down below. Do you guys think Ricky Rubio will come back, or do you guys think he might go to a team like Barcelona? Something like that. Of course, definitely let me know your thoughts and opinions. Don't forget to subscribe to my, you know, gaming channel, my IRL slash vlog channel, and my podcast. I'll be linking them all in the description down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.